What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. It's been a minute since my latest update <laughs> where I recalled my adventures in tank cycling. But now that everything has been fully cycled for about a month now and I have regained my sanity to an extent, I have so much more to tell you guys. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. All right. I bet everyone here is really invested in the current coral situation, so I'm going to start with that first to get it out of the way, as long as you promise not to click away from the video after I'm finished with this and you watch the rest of it. <laughs> Currently, I have just a few corals in my tank. I have a decently sized frog spawn, uh, three small colonies of teal duncans, as well as a budding zoa garden, which includes pink diamond, electric oompa loompa, blue rhino, bloodsucker, and super sunflower zoanthids. Before putting all the corals into the tank, we went ahead and dipped them in revive coral cleaner to try and eliminate as many pests that may be lingering as possible. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to be struggle bussing through Aptasia right out of the gate, so we can put that off for as long as possible. So far, in terms of zoanthids, everything is doing pretty well. Some of the zoanthids uh, did start extending because they were in more shaded areas in the rockscape, which was fine. They were still healthy and happy, just, you know, slightly taller than before. But it wasn't really a look that was ideal. So I ended up expanding the rock bed to allow for a larger zoa garden and moved the extended zoas to that area. When it came to mounting the zoanthids, however, we didn't use any glue or putty to attach them to the rock, mainly because we could just use the stems from the plugs and plug them into the rock. Nothing has been seen floating around, so I doubt we're going to be trying to secure them at any point soon because we really don't think it's necessary. To be honest, I'm glad that we didn't secure them because that would have gone not so well for my extended Zoa issue. As for the Duncans, they have been the favorite child of the tank. Uh, they have given me no issues whatsoever. We did have to secure these with epoxy putty though, but they are still holding up really well. No complaints there. I don't know if it's because they were stressed when I moved them into the tank, making them a little bit smaller, but these Duncans have gotten quite a bit bigger compared to a month ago. So I'm going to have to try and get some more corals up here pretty quickly to prevent them from spreading over the whole top. That wouldn't entirely be an issue because it doesn't look bad. I just want more of a variety, you know? Now for the frog spawn, it's also doing really well. Not really distressed at all from the move, despite the clowns hosting in it now. Oh yeah, by the way, the clowns have started hosting in the frog spawn. Big news, I know. They're never too rough with it, which is good, except you may have seen in some of these clips, the frog spawn was sitting on the edge of this rock. We didn't think it was needed to secure it and also like the plate is kind of awkward so we just kind of left it sitting there and figured it would be fine um newsflash it was not fine <laughs> now you can see that it is sitting in the sand because the clowns kept pushing it over and it kept getting very angry <laughs> so uh it's now just going to stay in the sand so we don't have that issue anymore the clownfish are the reason why we can't have nice things ever <laughs> Speaking of clownfish, let's also talk about the current fish situation. So the clownfish are doing really well in the tank. No issues have been seen since putting them into the tank at all, despite, you know, the whole frog spawn situation. But uh, they relaxed relatively quickly after getting moved. However, now that they have started hosting in the frog spawn, they have gotten a tad more aggressive, as everyone said that they would. Part of me really hoped that that wasn't gonna happen, but the realist in me knew it was an inevitable thing. They haven't tried to bite me yet, yet being the keyword in that sentence, but they do look like they wanna try and take my lunch money any chance that they get, so that's been fun. I've also introduced an algae blenny into this tank. I love him. He has a mustache and he looks like his name should be Reginald or something to that extent. He's definitely the introvert of the group. He tolerates the clownfish swimming around him all the time, but has dug himself a burrow underneath the rockwork on the left to hide when he needs to. So every now and then you'll see him poke his little head out. He also enjoys sitting on the zoanthids from time to time. They don't seem to like it too much, but he seems cozy, so you know, whatever. 
At one point, we also had a leopard grass in the tank, and that was going really well. Uh, no noticeable issues until I noticed that it started burrowing and hiding more than usual. That was a concern at first, mainly because I didn't know much about fish. I didn't think anything of it when it would come out and start swimming around like normal. So I figured, oh, he's just sleeping more than normal. I get it. I get tired, whatever. And there wasn't any sign of sickness that we could see, so I kind of just shoved it under the rug. But you may have already guessed that was a mistake. Little leopard grass buddy is no longer in this tank, but the big tank in the sky. He died maybe a week or so after we did put him in the tank. To avoid another tragic death from what we assume was an internal parasite that we couldn't really see, or an internal sickness, we began mixing metronidazole, a fish medication meant for parasites and bacterial diseases, into the fish food every day for a couple weeks, and so far, no change in fish behavior. The clownfish and algae blenny are as happy as ever, so in hindsight, uh, it was good that it was just the wrasse. I'm glad that uh, nothing got passed along to my other fish, because that would have been devastating. Some of the other friends that I've added to the tank are two little ninja star snails. I gotta give it to these little dudes. They have kept my rock looking so clean. I am stunned. Crazy how something so small can do so much work. The next fish I'm thinking of adding are a tang of sorts, as well as a Bengai cardinal. Uh, after that, I really have no idea what else I'm gonna add. Something, but I don't know what in particular yet. So before the tank was fully cycled, I was able to test my water for ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates, but that's all I really knew how to do, or actually was able to do at the time. So now that my tank is fully cycled, I have recently been learning a lot uh, when it comes to other maintenance -y stuff when it comes to taking care of a tank. For example, I've upgraded from testing for ammonia and nitrites to testing for magnesium, calcium, and alkalinity. And then I'm still testing for nitrates like I was before. This has also led me to learn not only how to test for these things, but also how to keep the levels steady over time. So for example, my alkalinity is always low for some reason, so it's been interesting to learn how much alkalinity solution I need to add into the tank and over how much time before it's back to the levels that I want until, you know, it inevitably goes back down again. Rinse and repeat. The next thing that has been an enlightening experience, to say the least, has been the cleaning of the tank. Luckily, my algae blenny and the snails do a lot of the work cleaning the rocks and the sand, but my job is cleaning everything more behind the scenes. Cleaning out the filter socks isn't too, too bad, uh, you know, except for the time that I accidentally drowned a spider while changing them, and now I'm scarred for life and constantly on the lookout for spiders. <laughs> Protein skimmers, however, are quite the experience scent-wise. Like, how is it that smelly? I don't understand how it can be that gross. Am I being dramatic? Maybe a little bit. But you have to agree with me that protein skimmers are gross. That's just, that's just a fact. I actually never realized how much went into maintaining a tank until I decided to get my hands dirty with this one. So finally, you're probably wondering, what's going to be in the next video? Well, obviously we want to put some more corals in there. I want to focus more on the rock archways next because they're still empty. So that'll involve me picking out some Montipora and Favia varieties that I've been eyeing recently. I also want to add some Blastomusa in there somewhere, maybe under the tree rockscape on the right. So we shall see how that goes. As for the tank itself, some areas of the tank aren't getting as much flow as I would like, so there will probably be an addition of another power head in the tank at some point in the near future as well, to keep things flowing more smoothly throughout the tank. Alright everyone, that does it for this tank update. I hope to get back to you soon with a slightly fuller tank next time. And if you guys have any suggestions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments down below. Until next time, take care, and as always, happy reefing. <laughs> Why is my eyes so itchy? It's like in there. Anyway, um, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> but he seems close.
closey. <laughs> I'm itchy, but I'm wearing makeup so I can't actually itch because then I'm just gonna scratch it off. I keep getting hair in my mouth. Ugh. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, don't feel, don't feel the need to comment them down below is what I was gonna say. It's like, if you have any suggestions, don't. <laughs> I feel like I sounded like a robot saying that. We're gonna do that again. <laughs> At one point, we also, my hair keeps getting in my mouth. It's just cardinal that's getting me messed up. Cardinal. Cause I wanna say like Midwest me wants to go cardinal. Cardinal. And that's weird. <laughs>